Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, says this. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the shepherds, and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. One of the duties required... In the second commandment, according to question 108 of the Westminster Larger Catechism, as Daniel covered last week, is the reading, preaching, and hearing of the Word of God. This week, we are going to focus on the duty to hear not the Word read, not your your private Bible reading or your family Bible reading, um, not to hear the Word read, but to hear the Word preached. The second commandment requires both. You need to hear the scriptures read, yes and amen. You are required to hear, to hear the word of God. And because of its availability, we should hear and read it regularly. But you are also required to hear the word preached. And that can throw some of us off a bit if we aren't careful. Because after all, what could anyone else possibly add to my own Bible knowledge? How can another sinner possibly help my sanctification? Well, get married and you'll find out. The answer to those questions is simple, but it is hard to hear. You have blind spots. You need the church. You need your elders. You need your fellow members to point out the logs and... The specks in your eye. You need brothers who will correct you. You need elders who will shepherd your soul. And you need to hear the preached word, especially when it stings. The preached word is different from the word when you read it. If you choose to, you could hold the scriptures out that's at arm's length. You could faithfully read your Bible for years and never allow yourself to be challenged to apply the text to your daily life or to your character. Preaching is not simply reading a text. That is reading, not preaching. That would make the prep a lot simpler, trust me, uh, but that isn't preaching. Preaching isn't the same thing as teaching, even. We have not come here today for an academic lecture or for a TED Talk. We have come here today to be cut up by the preached word, the sword of the Spirit, and laid upon the altar as an ascension offering to God. This is something that you can't get in the same way at your Bible reading at home. This is why God gave preachers and teachers to the church, because the church needs preachers and teachers. You can't even get appropriate preaching to your soul from YouTube or from your favorite pastor's sermon podcast, at least not the preaching that your soul needs. Preaching is always aimed, good preaching, I should say, is always aimed at the hearts of the actual people sitting in the seats. A good preacher is thinking about his people when he is prepping a sermon. Not a homogenous blob of, you know, Christians or even American Christians, but his actual people. And their actual sins and their actual temptations and their temperaments. Our needs here in the Midwest, specifically in Leavenworth, Kansas, our needs here are different from the needs of the saints in Idaho or Minneapolis or Texas. You need to hear preaching from someone who had you and your family in mind when they prayed over their text. That preaching stings. But being cut up by the sword of the Spirit is supposed to sting. Lean in to the sting. Praise God for it. And realize that true spiritual maturity is very rare and difficult, apart from A, a good stinging, and B, from good preaching aimed at your heart and at your head. Amen? Amen. 
Well, because we often believe that the church needs us more than we need the church, and we flee from or guard against preaching that stings, we are reminded of the need to confess our sins regularly. So if you're able, please kneel with us as we will confess our sins silently, and then we will do so corporately using the prayer found in the bulletin. <clears throat> 